William C. Durant, a visionary who left an indelible imprint on the very essence of cars and transportation. His unwavering spirit of innovation and relentless pursuit of excellence not only reshaped the industry, but also carved a legacy that continues to inspire and influence generations. However, beneath the triumphant chapters of his life lies a tale of challenges and setbacks, revealing the complex journey of a man who soared to great heights and yet experienced a fall that would test his resilience and redefine his legacy. William Crapo Durant was born on December 8, 1861 in Boston, Massachusetts. He grew up in a middle-class family with a background in lumber and finance. During his childhood and teenage years, Durant displayed an early aptitude for business and entrepreneurship. His mother, Rebecca, was the daughter of Michigan Governor Henry H. Crapo, who was also of French descent. William dropped out of high school to work in his grandfather's lumber yard. As a young man, Durant became involved in the horse-drawn carriage industry, a field that would later influence his interest in automobiles. This early exposure to transportation technology likely laid the groundwork for his eventual transition into the automotive industry. His upbringing in a family with ties to the lumber and finance sectors might have contributed to his early exposure to business concepts and practices. Durant's childhood and teenage experiences likely played a role in nurturing his entrepreneurial mindset and setting the stage for his significant contributions to the automotive industry. In the late 19th century, William Crapo Durant's entrepreneurial spirit led him to establish the Flint Road Cart Company, a venture that would lay the foundation for his future involvement in the automotive industry. At the time, horse-drawn vehicles were a primary mode of transportation, and Durant recognized the potential of this burgeoning industry. The Flint Road Cart Company, founded in the early 1900s, initially focused on the production of horse-drawn vehicles, particularly road carts. These carts were essential for transportation in both urban and rural settings, serving as practical and reliable means of travel. Durant's decision to enter this market showcased his ability to identify opportunities in existing industries and capitalize on them. Under Durant's leadership, the Flint Road Cart Company thrived. The company manufactured high-quality road carts that gained a reputation for their craftsmanship and durability. Durant's commitment to excellence and his understanding of customer needs contributed to the company's success in a competitive market. As the automotive industry began to emerge and evolve, Durant's experiences in the horse-drawn vehicle sector provided him with valuable insights. He understood the mechanics of transportation, the importance of design, and the dynamics of manufacturing. These insights would prove invaluable as Durant transitioned from producing horse-drawn vehicles to automobiles. The decision to venture into automobile production marked a turning point for Durant and his company. By aligning with the emerging automotive market, he positioned himself at the forefront of a transformative industry that would reshape transportation and society as a whole. William C. Durant's most significant and transformative achievements was orchestrating the formation of General Motors, GM, in 1908. This pivotal move marked the beginning of a new era in the automotive industry and laid the foundation for one of the largest and most influential corporations in the world. Durant's vision for GM stemmed from his understanding of the automotive market and his desire to create a unified entity that could leverage the strengths of multiple brands. At the time, the automobile industry was still relatively fragmented, with various manufacturers operating independently. Durant recognized the potential benefits of consolidation, both in terms of cost-saving and increased market power. In 1908, Durant orchestrated the merger of several prominent automobile companies, including Buick and Oldsmobile, under the umbrella of General Motors. This marked the birth of GM as a holding company that controlled multiple car brands, each catering to different market segments and consumer preferences. The merger allowed GM to pool resources, share technologies, and streamline production processes, leading to greater efficiency and economies of scale. Durant's approach to forming GM was characterized by his ability to rally investors and secure funding for the venture. He was adept at convincing individuals and financial institutions to support his vision, which enabled him to acquire the necessary resources to execute his plan. The ability to secure funding and build alliances was a key factor in the success of the merger of the subsequent growth of GM. After the successful formation of General Motors and the consolidation of several automobile brands, 
William C. Durant faced a series of financial challenges and conflicts that would test his leadership and business acumen. While GM initially enjoyed growth and success, Durant's ambitious expansion strategies led to mounting debts and financial strain. His rapid acquisition of various car manufacturers and brands stretched the company's resources thin, and the burden of debt began to weigh heavily on GM's financial health. This precarious situation drew concern from shareholders and investors who were worried about the company's financial stability. Additionally, Durant's management style and decision-making came under scrutiny. His willingness to take risks and pursue bold strategies clashed with more conservative viewpoints held by some shareholders. As disagreements emerged over the direction of the company, tensions escalated and conflicts between Durant and other executives began to surface. The financial challenges and conflicts within GM culminated in a power struggle between Durant and his detractors. Shareholders, concerned about the company's financial standing and his leadership approach, began to push for changes. In 1910, faced with mounting pressure from shareholders and mounting debts, Durant was ultimately removed from his position as president of General Motors. The company's board of directors sought a change in leadership to address the financial turmoil and to regain investor confidence. After his departure from General Motors, William C. Durant's entrepreneurial spirit remained undeterred. In 1911, he embarked on a new venture that would have a lasting impact on the automotive industry, the co-founding of Chevrolet with the Swiss-born race car driver and engineer, Louis Chevrolet. Durant's partnership with Louis Chevrolet was a strategic move that combined Durant's business acumen with Chevrolet's engineering expertise. The collaboration aimed to create a brand that could challenge the dominance of Ford's Model T in the affordable car market. The introduction of Chevrolet marked a departure from the luxury-focused brands that Durant had been associated with during his time at GM. Instead, Durant and Chevrolet set their sights on producing cars that were more accessible to the average consumer. This strategic shift reflected a keen understanding of the evolving consumer demand for affordable, reliable, and mass-produced automobiles. One of Chevrolet's key achievements was the development of the Series 490 in 1915. Priced at $490, this model was designed to directly compete with Ford's Model T in terms of affordability while offering a comparable level of quality and performance. The Series 490's success can be attributed to its combination of affordability, practicality, and innovation. Under Durant's leadership, Chevrolet employed efficient manufacturing techniques, enabling the brand to produce cars at a lower cost without compromising on quality. This commitment to affordability without sacrificing quality resonated with consumers, and Chevrolet quickly gained popularity. Chevrolet's success marked a significant achievement for Durant as it showcased his ability to identify market gaps and develop strategies that catered to consumer needs. The brand's emphasis on providing an affordable alternative to Ford's Model T allowed Chevrolet to capture a significant share of the market. Durant's return to GM was facilitated by his partnership with Pierre S. Dupont, a wealthy industrialist. Together, they initiated a stock buying campaign that aimed to accumulate shares of GM stock. By acquiring a substantial portion of the company's shares, Durant and DuPont gained a significant influence over GM's board of directors and management. This effort culminated in Durant's triumphant return to the helm of General Motors in 1916. His ability to rally support, secure financial backing, and navigate complex financial transactions showcased his resourcefulness and determination. Upon regaining control of GM, Durant wasted no time in resuming his expansion strategies and acquisitions. He believed in the strength of a diversified portfolio of brands, each catering to different market segments and consumer preferences. Durant's philosophy was rooted in his vision of creating a powerful automotive conglomerate that could withstand market fluctuations and offer a wide range of vehicles. Under his leadership, GM continued to expand its portfolio through acquisitions of various automobile manufacturers. Brands such as Chevrolet, Cadillac, and Pontiac were already part of GM, and Durant's return allowed him to further shape the corporation's identity by adding new brands to the mix. During his return to GM in the early 1920s, Durant continued to pursue expansion strategies and acquisitions with his characteristic vigor. However, his ambitious approach often collided with the more conservative viewpoints of other executives and shareholders. This clash of ideologies and management styles created a tense environment within the company. 
Additionally, Durant's financial maneuvers and leveraged acquisitions raised concerns among shareholders and investors. Some feared that his strategies could potentially compromise the financial health of GM and jeopardize the stability of the company. Amid these conflicts, a series of events unfolded that culminated in Durant's second ousting from GM in 1920. Faced with mounting pressures from shareholders and growing concerns about the company's future under Durant's leadership, the board of directors decided to remove him from his position as president of General Motors. After being removed from General Motors for the second time, William C. Durant's entrepreneurial spirit remained undeterred. In 1921, he established Durant Motors, a company that bore his own name and aimed to produce automobiles that reflected his vision for the industry. Durant Motors' primary objective was to offer a diverse range of automobiles that catered to various market segments. However, the journey for Durant Motors was not without its challenges. The competitive landscape of the automobile market in the 1920s was fierce. Established brands, including those within GM, as well as other independent manufacturers, vied for consumer attention. Durant Motors faced tough competition from both domestic and international automakers. Additionally, economic conditions posed difficulties for Durant Motors. The aftermath of World War I, coupled with an evolving consumer base and shifting preferences, made it challenging for the company to establish a strong foothold in the market. Economic uncertainties and changing trends created obstacles that Durant Motors needed to navigate. Despite Durant's best efforts, Durant Motors faced financial strain due to these challenges. The company struggled to achieve the same level of success and dominance that Durant had experienced during his tenure at GM. In the wake of challenges faced by Durant Motors, including tough competition and changing consumer preferences, the company's financial struggles intensified due to the economic impact of the Great Depression. The global economic downturn that began in 1929 had far-reaching consequences affecting industries across the board, including the automobile sector. For Durant Motors, the combination of existing challenges and the broader economic downturn proved to be a formidable hurdle. As consumers tightened their belts and hesitated to make big-ticket purchases, demand for automobiles dropped significantly. The decrease in sales revenue placed immense pressure on the company's financial resources, exacerbating the financial difficulties it was already experiencing. Unable to weather the economic storm, Durant Motors ultimately faced bankruptcy in 1933. The company's financial situation had become untenable and it was unable to meet its financial obligations. The bankruptcy marked the end of Durant Motors' operations and signaled the conclusion of an era for William C. Durant's involvement in the automobile industry. In his later years, William C. Durant shifted focus after the bankruptcy of Durant Motors, exploring real estate, stock speculation, and investments. He also enjoyed yachting and boating as personal interests. Despite challenges, his contributions gained recognition when he was posthumously inducted into the Automobile Hall of Fame in 1972. Durant passed away on March 18, 1947, leaving a legacy of entrepreneurial spirit and innovation in the automotive industry.